Hi guys, it's Nigel. Welcome back to my channel. I help awaken women create their dream life using manifestation and mindset. This month in Dream Life Academy, we are doing the Obsessed Masterclass. This is all about how to cultivate a deep, delicious sense of self-love within yourself so that you can be charged up to create your dream life. If you've been pouring your energy into other people, places, and things, it is time to pull the energy back to yourself because because you need your precious life force energy to create your dream life. What is Dream Life Academy? Dream Life Academy is our private community of awakened women. We get together every week to do accountability calls. And like I said, this month for our accountability calls, we will be doing the Obsessed Masterclass. Don't worry if you can't catch the lives. We always put the replays in the class so you'll be able to go back, watch the pre-recorded videos, get all the knowledge information about how you can cultivate a deep sense of self-love. If you love my videos that I've been posting about being self-obsessed, self-love on crack, how to love yourself even harder, even deeper, you want to be a part of Dream Life community. And even if you cannot make it live, you can always catch the replays. I can't wait to see you guys in Dream Life Academy. The women are incredible. They're focused. They're creating their dream life. We're working on manifestation techniques. It is so beautiful cultivating this sisterhood, and I want you guys to be a part of it. So... Go to the link down below so you guys can check out Dream Life Academy. Make sure you join this month so you can be a part of the Obsessed Masterclass. Right now we're meeting every Monday at 8 p.m. And sometimes we'll do other times for the women who are international in different time zones. Be a part of it. Link's below. I'll see you guys there. Join Dream Life Academy. Bye! So when it comes to deadlines, I would say ask your dream self. But also, don't allow your ego or your fear to get in the way right so like if i say dream self what is the next product do i need that i need to create and they tell me the product sometimes we can get overwhelmed right and be like oh my god you really want me to do that oh my god you really want me to make that video oh my god you really want me to x y and b right so we have to be willing to you know ask okay well when do you want this done because the, the significance of it is the divine timing, right? If we sit on things for too long, they might not have the same effect as if we were given the download to do it and they tell you when to do it. And for whatever reason, things just line up exactly how they're supposed to and they just have the best result, right? I'll give you an example. Um, that video I made, Become Deeply Obsessed With Yourself. My guides had told me to make this video. They told me what to title the video. They told me when I need to drop it. If I had said, okay, I'm going to make this video, but um, I don't really feel like doing it today, so I'm just going to wait. All of the shifts that have been happening for me and my business and all of these things would have been delayed. So that's the significance of you know checking with the divine timing. Okay, what do you want me to do? Okay, when do you want me to do it? Because for whatever reason, you know, things line up the way they're supposed to when we are obedient to the information. So again, it's like intuitively, how do you feel about it? And then, you know, go from there, if that makes sense. I will definitely sit with that for sure. Yeah. Thank you. Of course. Ina? So I, based on what you guys were just talking about, I kind of have a question in the terms of like self-forgiveness when it comes to procrastination procrastination because in a reading that I got an oracle reading that I got in June the oracle reading told me that within you know within these like last three months if I don't procrastinate right on certain things I will get rewards for it for not procrastinating but I have been procrastinating and I guess it's in that like you know just from that fear-based limited mindset kind of and just I just always have so many ideas of like okay well, well I'm going to do this or I want to do that kind of just what you guys were just talking about and waiting too long for certain things so I guess I'm just curious like if we don't act on those things is our higher self mad at us? Are they disappointed in us? Or I hope that makes sense what I'm asking, but. 
So I definitely wouldn't say that there's like anger or frustration. Like, again, we're God having our experience, right? So we have free will. Whatever we want to do, the universe is like, I'm cool with it. If you want to, you know, take yourself seriously and do X, Y, and Z, I'm cool with it. If you want to relax and, you know, like cruise and whatever, I'm cool with it. So there's no sense of, you know, punishment, if you will, right? The only punishment is not being where you want to be, right? It's a natural consequence. So nobody is mad at you if you don't act when you've been given information. You know, like God is very graceful, gracious. It's not going to be mad at you. There's no punishment. However, I will say the downloads, the, the same way God can give you the download, God can give someone else the download, right? So it's like, if we don't act on it, the work is still going to get done in the world regardless, right? So you can be the one to take action and then be blessed for the action you've taken or someone else can get the download and then they will be the one to be blessed for the action that's taken. So it's your show, right? The only consequence is not being where you want to be. The only consequence is not creating the life that you say you want to create. But there's no punishment. There's no judgment. There's no, you know, pitchforks going to get you. You're going to hell because you did an X, Y, and Z. No, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yes, yeah, thank you. I really... I, I really like that like the only consequence is not being where you want to be like I don't know that just really resonated with my spirit so thank you yeah sorry about that I was just typing that part too um it also resonated with me um I had a question that was um I guess it's kind of along the same lines so in a sense I feel like I'm already hearing some answers but it was just well before I even say that um it has happened to me um this experience of having like a really grand idea um you know gifted to me and then not acting on it and seeing it uh executed by someone else and yeah, I'm pretty sure this person is like a, a multimillionaire at this point but um my question was how do you find um slash manage the energy to maintain sustainably like these creative impulses and yeah initially I was thinking like honing in on the difference between the dream ideal and the right now like and like as far as like what is the next step kind of compared to what is a step right that I aspire to and I see down the line but I think what has been coming up as I'm hearing everyone is one, that whole divine timing that you're saying, Nyjah, um, you know, remembering that like the universe is acting in consort to support this idea birthing through me. And um, yeah, and that there are like collaborators that we will encounter. So maybe I've, I, I don't know, but I, I do find myself coming back to the question, especially about like, managing the energy sustainably because I think one of my biggest fears is kind of um doing putting something out there and not being able to mother it basically and like I don't know leaving it to die like I just I, I, there's a way that it feels irresponsible to me and um yeah just like with these creative ideas so sorry if that was a bit long-winded and um let me know if to clarify but that's the question I have okay so wait let me just regurgitate to see if I understand the question so okay. you're receiving a lot of like divine downloads or creation ideas um but you're not sure if when you start working on it that you'll be able to sustain it is that what you're saying Yes, yes. And so partly because of that, I'm like, oh, is that something that I need to do now? Or is that something I need to kind of put the reps in, in order to be able to like, I don't know, lift, right? Like eventually. Um, yeah. Okay. I understand. Okay. So yeah, I mean, that is a fear that I had with like, starting a community or like, 
receiving coaching clients or like all of that like am I gonna have the energy to keep this up like if I start this if I push the ball am I gonna be able to keep the ball rolling but it's exactly what you just said with showing up with having the reps it becomes easier and easier right um the fear is that you're doing something that you've never done before but in the creation of it, you become someone you've never been before. So whereas when you first start pushing the ball, you're like, am I doing it? Is it moving? Are we like you put the creation out there? Oh, my God, am I going to have the energy to keep showing up for this? Yeah, you do. Because as you show up for it, as you nurture your creations, you are becoming a different person, you are changing, you are evolving, you're putting in the reps, you're gaining the muscle to be able to sustain your creation. Um, I know like another example, like a big fear of content creators is, am I going to be able to keep producing content? What if I run out of ideas? What if I stop showing up? The truth is, once the ball is rolling, it's going to keep rolling. This is the power of momentum. The hardest thing is getting the ball to start moving initially. But once the ball is moving, it's easy to keep the ball moving. And again, you become a different person through, you know, growing with your creations. It's like, yes, my business is growing, but also so am I growing on a personal or fundamental level. Um, yes, I started this new project, but you know, I get good at it. It's not so hard. It's easy for me to show up now. I'm being energized by the thing that I'm pouring my energy into. So I hope that makes sense. It makes so much sense. And thank you, um, truly, like hearing your, just hearing how you put that, um, especially the, the getting energy from what I'm putting energy in and the nurturing part. I think I just had like a whole ass healing of my like, mother relationship right there and just like being reminded that um the child strengthens us too and anyways thank you i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna take this and, and soak it in yeah and that was a that was a word right there what you said like as feminine energy women and i'm just assuming that we are but of course we shift into masculine and feminine all the time it is our job to nurture so our creation our, we, we can nurture them. It's our feminine play to nurture our creations. And in return, they pour into us. They feed us. You grow the business and then the business feeds into you by sending you money or sending you clients, sending you enjoyment, fulfillment, trips that you get to go on. So it's like, as you pour your energy into your creations, your creations get to pour energy back into you. My question is, with my spirituality and mindset mentoring that I want to do, I guess it's a two-part question. One is because I'm back working at my job and I start at eight o'clock in the morning and I'm off at three, I don't really know how to go about taking the calls, like the one-on-one -on -one coaching, like like making that schedule make sense so I want to know your perspective on that and then also I was watching one of your videos yesterday like it was an older video and you had mentioned kind of what I'm feeling it was like well who would want to book this kind of coach if you know they don't have their stuff together right so if I'm someone you know I, I feel these negative mindsets I feel like well how can I really be a mindset mentor, if that makes sense? I hope what I'm saying makes sense. Yeah, it definitely does. Okay, so I'll answer your second question first. So the reason why we go through shit is so that when our clients come to us with their shit, we're like, I understand. I've been there. I felt that. This is how I got through it. So don't condemn yourself for going through hardship. You know, like I, I was asking myself, well, who's going to want to coach with me when I just had X, Y, and Z happen? But the truth is, it makes me more relatable, right? People can mm -hmm. trust me with their baggage because I've been there. You know, I've been the person who didn't have money in her bank account. I've been the person who had my car repossessed. I've been the person who's gotten evicted from my house. I've been there. 
And so that makes me even more creditable to people who are going through it, right? You have an understanding that people who have never gone through that type of thing, they can't speak to that. They don't know what that feels like, right? And so you are still worthy and able to speak to these things. And a beautiful thing about being a coach is we go through things so that we can teach other people how to get out of it. So if you're currently dealing with having negative mindset or whatever you're working with, whatever heavy emotions or baggage that you're dealing with, you are learning to transmute it so that you can be a leader or a guide for somebody else. So it's okay if you're dealing with, you know, battling your negative mindset, whatever you're dealing with. The answer is, how do I overcome it? And what are the lessons that I'm going to teach my potential clients from this? right? So that's right. the first thing. You're going through things because you're a teacher. You're going through hardship because you are a transmuter. You're going through things because one day you're going to be able to gain the knowledge, the wisdom, the insight, the medicine from it, and administer that medicine to other people. So that's the significance of why we go through hardships, even as a coach, right? But of course, you want to master it before you start you know acting like you know how to talk about it so again if you were wanting to help people with their mindset it makes sense that god is shoving mindset stuff in your face to teach you how to deal with it so you can even speak to somebody about it so that's why that stuff gets shoved in our face um to your first question when can you make time to work on your business I would say for, so not for the Zoom session, but something that we really have to do, and I hate this so much because like when I was like juggling two things, I was like, I'm not going to have time to do anything, um, mm -hmm. but getting up earlier, putting energy to your business before you give energy to your day job. And I know you already have to be up at eight o'clock. You're like, what the hell? I'm tired. But give your best energy to the thing that matters most to you first and foremost. So whether that's waking up first thing to write out the video scripts or waking up first thing to pre-plan the emails you're gonna send to your clients or pre-plan the text messages you're gonna send to your clients, give your dreams your energy first. Right, and that's, um, that's actually something that I, what is the word we've been using intuitively been called to do is like waking up early because I already have to be at work at eight. So I'm like, I already feel super rushed in the morning. So my higher self wants me. And it's like, it's on my, my dream, uh, my vision board, you know, waking up at like five, but I've been making myself kind of get up at four so I can have like slow mornings because I appreciate slow mornings. I don't like feeling super rushed. So that is something that I've already been called to do yeah and you know you're going to work anyway so what does it hurt no. waking up a few minutes early busting out the work for your dreams going to work and then take a nap when you get home and you don't feel guilty about taking a nap because you've already taken care of the real work that you're feeling called to do and remember it's just a juggling act until you get the dream off the ground and then eventually all your energy can go to the dream but it's a juggling act in the beginning, you know? It's yeah. it's you proving to yourself how motivated and dedicated you are to the dream in the beginning. And then you get to devote all your time to the dream because you are willing to devote time to the dream when you had no time. Thank you. 